The following program is rated TV MALV. It contains strong language and violence. It is intended only for mature audiences. Blacks were happy, obedient slaves who sang spirituals and waited for the good Lord Jesus to come and set them free. They hardly ever rebelled against their horrific conditions because they knew that if they did, they would end up with nooses strung around their necks and their bloody decapitated heads mounted on poles along the major thoroughfares to set an example for any enslaved Africans who even contemplated doing the same. <laughs> Wait a minute, that's not historically accurate. There's more to the history of so-called African Americans than our enslavement that's pathetically portrayed in movies such as Roots and 12 Years a Slave. For example, the Gullah Geechee people living along the Sea Islands in South Carolina and Georgia fled their enslavers and established numerous independent settlements throughout Florida. And I'm not talking about that dilapidated Spanish-controlled town called Gracia Real de Santa Teresa de Mose that revisionist historians and white supremacists falsely prop up as the place where blacks fled to and lived happy and free. Were it not for the unprovoked, ungodly, and relentless pursuits of one of their greatest nemesis, Andrew Jackson, and Presidents Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, and James Monroe, the Gullah Geechee people would have reestablished Florida as an independent black nation similar to Haiti. How many slave rebellions have you heard about? I'm sure you've heard about Nat Turner. I've made videos about Denmark Vesey and John Brown. But something that's not mentioned enough is the fact that we've had hundreds of rebellions. Hundreds. And one rebellion that never gets talked about are the Gullah Wars. Our ancestors have never just accepted slavery and laid down. We have always fought back. Did they capture some of us? Yes. But when you're outmanned and outgunned, you're in a pretty tough position. You're in a tough position when you have this punk motherfucker pointing a gun at your nine-year-old daughter. His musket is in her face and he's telling you either get on this boat or I'll blow her head off. As a father, as a parent, you'll probably put those chains on and sit down on that boat. Now generations go by and people are born into slavery. Once you are born into slavery, hell, you think you are a slave. In Frederick Douglass's biography, he spoke about how once slavery was over, many of those slaves wanted to go back into slavery because that's all they knew. When you can control a man's mind, when you can brainwash him, you don't have to worry about his actions. The Gullah Wars is the part of history that they tried to keep from us. They've tried to disguise this as the Indian Wars, and they've also used many other names as this. The Civil War did not free us. President Lincoln did not suddenly gain a conscience and thought to himself, you know what? This is wrong. We shouldn't treat these people like this. We freed us. We freed ourselves. And this was through the Gullah Wars. The Gullah Wars lasted from 1739 to 1858. These were military-minded runaway slaves. The myth that all slaves fled to the north, no, more than half of them went south. 
they went to Florida. They want to tell you that all the slaves went to the north because they're trying to throw you off from the rebellion. The rebellion that took place for over 100 years. The slaves would run away and head to Florida. This is where they built their own military. Whenever a runaway was captured, he would come back to the plantation and let everyone know what's going on. And if that runaway didn't get captured, he would tell the people in Florida where the plantation was. Give them information about the plantation, where they can hit them, where this is hidden, where that's hidden. Letting their comrades know where to go and what to do. See, the Gullah Wars were vicious, but they had cohesiveness. They had the mindset of either we'll take our freedom or we'll die trying. Hundreds of angry slaves going to town to town, plantation to plantation, overwhelming everything in their past. And they was killing everything. People were getting their heads chopped off. People were getting set on fire. And they didn't care. This included women and children. Because you have to understand this. Yes, that may be graphic. But now, it was their turn to do the killing. It was their turn to do the raping. It was their turn to cut people open. It was their turn to cut heads off. They would ransack anything in their path and slaughter everybody. The first war began in 1739 called the Stono Rebellion. They went to a local gun shop and they took all the weapons. They killed the shop owner and as they collected the weapons and they left, they all chanted, Freedom, 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 freedom. It was so loud. Freedom, 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 freedom. It was so loud that it echoed throughout the town. Everybody heard it. As I've stated, the war lasted for over 100 years, but the most important one took place probably about a decade before the Civil War kicked off. These runaway warriors lit up the United States military. Yeah, you heard that right. The United States military got their asses handed to them. A little more than 400 escaped slaves defeated nearly 12,000 of the United States finest. They led them off into the swamps and other areas. And since they knew the location, they were aware of the surroundings the US had no chance now back in 1812 Spain was at war with the US over territory in Florida now Spain they got word of what was going on so they started giving weapons to the escaped slaves they started giving them weapons and they started training them and that army grew the army grew fast they were so aware of their surroundings out there in Florida. Every time there was a war, they lit their asses up. They had no chance. It was a one-sided battle. The US was getting attacked from angles that they had no idea how to respond to. There was a very prominent town in Suwannee, Florida. In Suwannee, they didn't need white folks for anything. They didn't need any assistance. Remarkable story. It's overlooked not just by filmmakers, uh, it's not well known in popular culture, and in fact, it's been overlooked by historians of slavery, if you can believe it. In the early 18th century, uh, two groups in particular uh, fled the colonial south into Spanish Florida, into the Everglades. One of these groups were Seminoles who were migrating from the various colonies 
uh, just trying to avoid white encroachment, basically, trying to move someplace that white colonists weren't. And the other group was runaway slaves, uh, people who were fleeing and trying to create a free life for themselves. Both were welcome in Florida. And in fact, the Spanish crown offered runaway slaves their freedom if they would defend the land for the crown, for, for the Spanish. So a mixed society emerged in the Everglades uh, of intermarriage, family intermingling between these runaway slaves and the Seminoles. And in fact, the first legally sanctioned black free town in the North American continent was in the Spanish uh, Florida Everglades. After the American Revolution, people living in the southern states didn't really like living that close to a large armed population of former slaves, particularly when they were in league with the local Native American nation, the large armed group of free Seminoles. And they knew that their own slaves felt free to run away and be harbored by this group. They knew that they were welcomed. And so from George Washington's administration on, there was questions of what do we do about the problem of the Florida Everglades. In 1818, uh, this was James Monroe's administration, uh, General Andrew Jackson actually moved into Florida, invaded it, uh, not authorized to do so. He was actually pursuing justice against those who'd attacked Fort Scott in Georgia, but he did it anyway. He went into Florida and uh, he took the opportunity to um, execute some of the people who opposed him and also to clean out some of the areas of uh, former slaves and Seminoles uh, because he felt that this would make it better for annexation. The United States then uh, soon actually bought Florida from the Spanish. When Jackson became president, he decided to make sure that the black Seminole communities were moved out by force. So he pursued this in his policy, his larger policy of Indian removal. This led to the Second Seminole War, which was 1835 to 1842, and became the largest and costliest of the so-called Indian Wars. Because the two communities were tied together, that is, the former slaves and the Seminoles, when the Seminoles were attacked in the Seminole War, this led to an uprising of the former slaves. In uh, April of 1836, black Seminoles and their Indian allies moved together to create what was the largest slave rebellion in U.S. history. This wasn't just a matter of runaway slaves. Uh, more than 385 plantation slaves ran away from their masters and joined the Black Seminoles, essentially in laying waste to the Florida sugar mills, which were some of the um, most valuable uh, areas, plantations in the whole continent. They didn't need any assistance. They had their own farming, their own land, and they were very successful. Soon to be president, Andrew Jackson, who was general at the time, sent the troops into Suwanee and they got annihilated. So they went into battle. They got their ass tore off. And as they retreated, since they were forced to retreat because they couldn't handle it, General Andrew Jackson spotted a section in the community where the women and children were hiding. Since all the men were fighting in the war, they hid all the women and children. This punk bitch motherfucker spotted them and slaughtered each and every one of them. They couldn't handle the men, so they slaughtered the women and children. And then they continued their retreat. But you see outrage today over these statues that we're trying to take down. See, Andrew Jackson is known as a hero. Andrew Jackson is on the $20 bill. All through school's curriculum, we were taught how people like Andrew Jackson were heroes. 
fuck Andrew Jackson. And may he rest in piss. Now the act of importing slaves was not stopped due to the kindness of their hearts. The United States stopped importing slaves because of the Gullah army. That army kept growing and growing. Now, as I stated before, the people who were born into slavery, they had a different mindset. Now, people that they were bringing over thought totally different. So you got these people that you're bringing over. They don't think that they're slaves. Now, some of the people that were born into slavery, they fought and they wanted to get out. But a lot of people they were bringing over, they were riders and they weren't having that shit. And this is what led to the Emancipation Proclamation. White towns had so much fear. Everyone was so afraid and they put so much pressure on Lincoln. This is why they did that. They knew that they wasn't gonna be able to contain this anymore. They saw how fast it was growing and this widespread warfare was getting out of control. General Thomas Jessup said that the Negroes are running the war. General Thomas Jessup convinced and insisted that they set these people free. It was time. See, they always want to throw different names around. You got to be careful with these names and read behind the history of this stuff. They want to call these the Seminole Wars or the Indian Wars. Now, on December 8th, 1837, General Jessup wrote a letter to Andrew Jackson telling him you may be assured this is a Negro and not an Indian war. And if it be not speedily put down, the South will feel the effects of it and their slave population before the end of next season. We have never just accepted slavery and laid down. They had rebellions on ships. And we had no guns. They were fighting without guns. There was over 100 rebellions in the 1600s. There was over 100 rebellions in the 1700s. There was over 100 in the 1800s. The Gullah Wars lasted for more than 100 years. We've never just laid down and took that. We've always fought back. Do not disrespect the ancestors like that. I've seen dumbass quotes of people saying, we are not our ancestors, we'll whoop y'all ass. Please don't disrespect the ancestors like that. They have never accepted that shit, never. Some of you motherfuckers scared to even talk back to your boss. So cut the bullshit. Some of you motherfuckers never had guns pointed to you. Never had guns pointed at your kids and telling you either put these chains on or I'm going to blow your daughter's head off. So cut the bullshit. I would highly recommend you go read The Invisible War. Another book, go read Florida's Negro War, Black Seminoles, and the Second Seminole War. And the third one, go check out The Unconquered. These three books will tell you everything you need to know about the Gullah Wars. Everything.
Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. And let me know what you think in the comment section.